How you doing everybody? Randy Richard in the shop. Uh, this is a three and a half inch bullet vise, uh, Wilton bullet vise, and it just uh, mounts. It might have had a swivel base, but I don't know. I didn't get it this way, or I didn't get a swivel base when I got this. Uh, I bought this on eBay, uh, actually a couple, few, couple of years ago actually. Uh, it's in really good shape. Uh, I haven't had to do anything to it, and um, other than the color's not too bad. But I, I want to use this on the new uh, welding table, or be able to use it on there. Be able to have a nice, good sized vise that will mount on there. The only problem is this handle. Yeah. That, I already loosened, already took this off. This is the retaining clip that goes in there. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, I want to use it on the welding table. So that's what this is going to be for. This is going to be the adapter plate I'm going to make uh, for the vise to. So this will be this will be mounted on on that on this plate, like so. But first, I want to convert this vise so I don't have this handle right this handle will be kind of in the way uh, causing uh, all sorts of issues this, this will not I mean at times this could work out if the if this was over the edge of the table but if the vice is mounted in the middle of the table or somewhere else on there this would be a, a great pain in the rear so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a whole new shaft for this a whole new Oh, bing, there we go. A whole new screw screw for this. Uh, I'm going to spin this out. There we go. So I'm going to make a whole new, whole new screw for this. Uh, I'm going to make this actually in two parts. Uh, the head piece will be separate from this, and we'll put them together. Uh, this is going to have a hex on the end. That way I can reach up there with a socket, wherever it is, or a wrench, and tighten the vise up. Now, this is, the, this is the harder part of it. After looking at this screw, I looked at it under a microscope, actually, and it is an Acme thread, but it's not a standard Acme thread. It's four and a half TPI, not four, which is a standard. Uh, which is a standard thread. It's a four and a half. This is three quarter stock and a standard Acme thread that's usually used is a six thread per inch Acme thread. So this is not close to any standards. <laughs> uh, so it's something special Wilton did and that's probably to make it a little bit more proprietary. So we're going to have to cut a four and a half thread on here and uh, on some three quarter stock. I already got a chunk of three-quarter stock cut off and in the lathe. So I needed to make a Acme threading tool, high-speed steel. And this is what I did on to make it really accurate instead of doing it by hand. So I have a sign machinist vise here. This is a suburban one, or a grinding vise. And I set it up at 14 and a half degrees. That's half, half the angle, 29 degrees for Acme total. I set this up with a gauge uh, gauge pin under just sitting underneath here to get approximately five degrees angle. So this one's, I'll turn the camera so you'll see the other angle. So this is tilted up. This is for clearance angle. This is the angle for the tool itself. And in here I have a, I have a little parallel, a little short parallel to set this on. You should see, see, uh, see the angles a little bit better. You can see how this is up at approximately 5 degrees. I measured the width of this part of the vise right here and calculated the size of gauge pin I would need if it was sitting right there on the edge to get me 5 degrees. So we have about 5 degrees there and then this angle is accurate with gauge blocks on the sign. On this, uh, this is a standard uh, five inch uh, sign here, as, as the sign rolls. And then I was able to uh, grind this 
I didn't tighten it up. Sitting on the parallel, ground that. I did blue this and mark off some lines. So uh, actually, it was ro it was tilted the other way. Just reverse that angle. So actually, I had this tilted the other way for the one side. So this side is the high side, and this side's the low side. And I ground this angle first down to an down to a line I scribed. Gave me an approximation for center. Then I flipped the flip the tool over. Put this put the angle the opposite direction, and ground this side down until I was at 93 thousandths across the front of the flat here. It's for f number four. So right there for four threads per inch and it fits absolutely perfect in there just just perfect for four threads per inch that front clearance angle I, I just hand ground it before I ground the sides you know it's about five or seven degrees or so that's about it came out really nice and uh, we'll back to the lathe and let's see it work all right back from the grinder and here's our tool we we got ground up. I'm going to mount that in a tool holder here. Now just like with a 60 degree angle or a fishtail gauge, you can set your, make sure your tool is square to your work and we'll just hold that edge up there and we're going to use the number four and we can just bring this in to confirm we are, how square we are, right? And now I can feel that moving that gauge a tiny bit. I'll just loosen this up a little bit. And we'll just, just a tiny bit of adjustment. There we go. And I already set it for center height. Now this is a right hand thread. We'll be turning counterclockwise with a chuck in the normal direction, right, like this. And we'll be traveling inward for a right hand thread. We have about eight and a half, we need about eight and a half inches. All right, uh, gear, change gears are set, lathe is set for four and a half threads per inch. Now, how deep are we going to go? Well, there's, uh, you can measure Acme threads with thread wires, but they have, there's a lot of calculations, you, extra calculations you have to do because of the angularity of the threads. Um, I measured them with the wires anyway, and I 841 <laughs> as a number. I could use that as a comparison number only. Threads look a little bit worn, so you know, it's just a comparison. I measured the thread height on the screw, and they measure about 96 thousandths. A stub Acme thread is 85 thousandths depth, and a standard Acme thread of four threads per inch now, a standard one is 135 thousandths. We need to cut this to make it work, is what we need to do. I'm going to take the body of the, the vise and actually try to screw it on to see how I'm doing. And I can use it as comparison numbers of what I've measured. Let's see about cutting this thread. <laughs> this is the fun part when you get something like this out of the ordinary and you're trying to remake it. So we'll see how we do. All right, I'm going to do this at about 150 RPM, it looks like. Um, well, 175. Um, and we'll see how it goes here. We're just going to do a scratch passing and then give it a check. That's our zero. Set our dial. Now you just have to cr crank out on your compound if you want to stop your thread somewhere. Leave it. Leave it engaged in your half nut and just crank out on your, your compound and you can pull out any time. That way you don't have to go all the way down just for a check. Now I have to have, happen to have a gauge that has four and a half. It just, that's how I figured out what it was. And that looks to be right, right on the money, four and a half. Now what they did down here is they just tapered the thread out. So I have a mark of the max length that is and about where they started, about a half an inch. So I'm going to see if I can duplicate that taper out. It's going slow enough, I think I can do that. I've done a few threads like that before, so.
I was a little early. All right, I've cut this down to a depth of 90 thousandths on my dial, and we're going to test this. this I took the nut out of the vise. It just that was just a lot easier, and uh, this is fitting perfect. Wow. Oh, this is perfect. I'm not going any deeper. I'm glad I stopped at 90. Oh, yeah. There we go. That, oh, absolute perfect fit. Oh yeah, we're, we're yeah. I'm sure this is worn a bit, but th that's a perfect fit. Uh, I'm just going to clean the thread up. Any wire edges, we'll get those off, and uh, call it good. So that came out good. I'm real happy with that. And uh, dealing with a, a weird thread, and it came out awesome, just awesome, or perfect. When you file across the tops there, you can feel the wire edges as they're coming off. When it all of a sudden feels really smooth, you, you know you got the wire edges off, at least off the top. There's, these edges are really pretty sharp, so I'm going to slow it down here. I'm going to take a triangular file and I just kind of rock it in there and I can cut those uh, edges so they're not quite so sh If there's any wire edges on there, you get them off.
Oh, yeah, that looks nice. Down here, there was a little pitting in the shaft itself. Uh, this is just a piece of leftover shafting from a, a treadmill. Uh, so <laughs> it worked good for the vise here. And I was able to taper that right out uh, on this end also. This is a piece of hydraulic cylinder rod, an uh, inch and a half, which is exactly what we are, what we wanted. So we're gonna face this and drill a hole and make it fit that the rod we just made, the threaded shaft, and we need to put a groove in here. And then we'll flip, cut it off, flip it around, and do the uh, other end. to size because I want it to be a really nice fit. Now that's 748. The shaft measures seven, a couple tenths over 749. That's 748 and that's a piston fit. 749, this is, this is like two tenths under 749 and it just kind of barely starts. I think I'll leave it. That way it's kind of a press fit and that will be good. We'll just chamfer the end a little bit. I'm thinking now I'm gonna put a, if I get that in there press fit, I think what I'm gonna do is leave it at a press fit and put a taper pin in. And that way I don't, I won't weld it in.